my Scrappy Life September crop. Uh, Miranda hosts a monthly crop in her group, My Scrappy Life, and she has a bunch of scrapbookers who all come in for the weekend and host different challenges throughout the weekend to help get your creative juices flowing, maybe inspire you, uh, and yeah, really get you motivated to to crop for the whole weekend. Um, so I am hosting the Scrap Your Scraps Challenge Uh, which is kind of like the culmination of the crop. So at the end of the crop, you guys have been working on projects all weekend long and finishing up all of these challenges. And you have uh, not only created some beautiful stuff, you also have created a giant pile of scraps, I'm sure. And so this is the challenge to inspire you to kind of get some of those scraps um, put together into a bit of a kit and uh, let's get them used up. That is the plan. I love scraps. I really struggle with, uh, you know, how many scraps I keep. You can see here I'm going through all of my fall scraps. And I have done some pretty big purges in the last few years, kind of really weeding through all of these scraps because fall is also my favorite season and my favorite, um, like, colors to scrap and and motifs and themes and stuff um I really love I could scrapbook fall stuff all the time and so I'm I'm pretty stingy I hold on to things I really like try to get every last little bit out of every collection I have and um yeah, I I have to rein myself in sometimes. And so the last couple of years, I've been really, really strict with myself about what kind of scraps I can keep, what I know I'm actually going to use, um, what are still scraps that I think are useful, but maybe not the ones that I'm actually going to use that I can pass on. Uh, And so, yeah, I've been working really hard. And honestly, I think that some of us are really good. They see a piece of paper. They know that it's not very big. They they toss it. And then there are the rest of us who hoard everything. We keep everything. And I, I think a lot of scrapbookers are in that second category. It's kind of in our nature to want to keep things. All these papers are so pretty. And we always have the best intentions to try to use them. Um, and th- And then we don't. And we need to sometimes make those tough decisions <laughs> and get rid of stuff. So my, cha- so I'm actually going to have two challenges every month, or I guess two parts to my challenge every month. One will be something creative to do with your scraps. And one is that at the end of putting your project together, whatever that project might be, Uh, It's time to then sort through those scraps again and make that tough decision about what is big enough to keep or useful enough and uh, what needs to either be tossed or rehomed or just let go of, Um, you know, because carrying those scraps forward means you have less space for new stuff. So that is going to be part of the challenge, just that like helpful reminder that when you're done with something it is okay to be done with it and you know pass it on or or chuck it or you know recycle it or um, put it in your pile of stuff to burn in your next fire whatever you do with your paper um, yes that is always going to be part of the challenge Um, but the creative part of the challenge for this month is to do exactly what I'm doing here. So with all of the scraps that you have accumulated this weekend um, while you were creating all of your amazing projects, I want you to go through those scraps and kind of sort them into like small, medium, large, and I want you to find one scrap that is large enough that it could be your background page. So in my case, I'm making a 12 by 12 layout. And so I found a scrap that was almost 12 by 12. This scrap was probably like 12 by 10 and a half. Like it was, it was pretty big, but then there's also this giant hole 
in it as well. So you're going to find a scrap from your large pile that you think would work well to be your background and then you're going to take some of those other scraps and piece them together to make sure that your layout background is the size of your project. So for me, I had to add those two strips up at the top to extend this from, you know, about 12 by, let's even say 12 by 11. Um, I needed that extra little chunk up at the top of my layout, or it could have been the side or the bottom, where wherever I chose to kind of orient that paper. Um, I needed to just extend it just that little bit to make it a full 12 by 12 so you know your largest piece of of paper might be much smaller than mine and you might have to be even more creative than I was I went to kind of a go-to very familiar technique and design for me which is adding torn strips of paper and in my pile of scraps I actually had a lot of scraps like this one that uh, were 12 inches long um, but I had used you know a, a fairly large chunk of it but I'd used it sort of in a vertical or I guess horizontal way uh, all of them were oriented kind of in this horizontal um, way so like those two pieces there the one side has acorns and hearts that has to look right so you have to have it um, in like the right position and so I can tell I actually used the bottom chunk of that paper and then on the other side the little teeny tiny hearts go in a certain direction so again I could tell that that's what I had done. Um, the paper up at the very top has birds on it so again you know there's only kind of one way to look at that piece of paper so obviously the layout that I did using these papers was some sort of horizontal layout as well um, and so the scraps to me just worked really well with this kind of design you might choose something completely different based off of the scraps that you have and you know what works best with the designs and the patterns and that kind of thing maybe you're not doing a 12 by 12 project maybe you're doing a traveler's notebook page or something like that so you just want to find whatever piece that's large enough that almost is the right size um, for your project and then you're going to take some of those smaller pieces and kind of you know piece them together to create that background uh, that is going to be the size you need it to be and then the extra challenge for me personally with this this background paper is that I now have that giant hole that I need to fill up <laughs> and so I had toyed with the idea of putting something behind that page um, and have some sort of pattern kind of poking out from behind it uh, and then as I was going and kind of getting these strips put down I thought to myself you know I'm just going to keep going with the layers and extend them all the way down so that they cover up that hole. Um, the other thing that I'm doing that I think actually is incredibly helpful is I'm playing along with Scrap Timbers prompt for um, today. So this is a layout that I had created for the 15th of September and the prompt for that day was sketch and Katie actually created a sketch that you could use if you're playing along with Scrap Timber. That's a uh, uh, basically a month-long challenge that happens that the Scrappy Sisters put on, um, Katie and Jessica, and you can play along with all of the prompts. There's a group as well. I will leave all those links down below and the playlist so you can go and kind of click on that playlist and check out the different prompts and what everybody's doing for them. But I think that having something like a sketch or a scrap lift uh, inspiration or some Pinterest inspiration something like that sometimes that can be really helpful so when you're kind of looking at all of these little bits and pieces of stuff nothing is a you know perfect 12 by 12 sheet there's no clean pristine unused pieces in all of these scraps you might not even be using scraps that come from all the same collection and so sometimes having that sketch or something else that just kind of gets those creative juices flowing a little bit and and gives you some ideas that can sometimes be helpful in 
um, trying to figure out where you're going to start putting all of these pieces of paper together and and how you're going to build a design from them. So uh, definitely help yourself to a sketch, either this one or the, the My Scrappy Life sketch for September's challenge. Um, whatever you think is going to work best for you. The link, did I already say the link for uh, Miranda's group is also down below so you can hop in and come and play along. Um, I'm also playing with the theme for this month's crop, which was um, something nice and something or something nice and something spicy or nice and spicy uh, essentially it's you know a color scheme of those beautiful fall colors so that's why I popped into my fall papers and pulled out some fall um, scraps but honestly whatever you know kind of works within that that color scheme for you it doesn't necessarily have to be fall but that's definitely the feeling we're going for and I have to admit I think fall is a really easy um layout scrap opportunity did I I'm not putting words together very well <laughs> it's it's been a long day um but it to me sometimes I think like this might sound overly simplified, but when all else fails, the one thing you can do with any fall layout or any fall project is you can add a ton of leaves to it. And so if you have a whole bunch of these little bits and pieces of papers and you're just not sure how to get the patterns to work together um, because again maybe the collections aren't all the same maybe the colors just aren't quite all exactly the same or matching um, you know or or in the 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 right um, tones and things like that but you just want to get all of these scraps used up you can definitely default to cutting leaves and that's what I did with some of those little scraps of burlap. Um, that came out of a paper pad that was all different types of burlap papers. And I just cut some leaf shapes. Very basic, kind of, you know, like rounded diamond leaf shapes um, out of some of that burlap. It gives a lot of texture, but it's just such a simple, easy shape. And it's something that your eye definitely can recognize so when I pop that into my little clusters here with other leaves that I've fussy cut from these little uh, like um, chunks of paper that I have they're like fussy cutting sheets that I found at Dollar Tree and I just have a, a bunch of scraps of them left over um, there were little tiny leaves on those and so I fussy cut a bunch of those out and when you put these clusters together uh, like you can't really tell they all just look like leaves that were intentionally made to be leaves and not just scraps of paper that I've cut into that shape um, I think Christmas is probably a good one that you can kind of cheat that way too because you can turn just about any uh, sized piece of paper into some circles and make them little baubles on a tree um, valentine's day or you know doesn't even have to be valentine's day anything where a heart works you can definitely cut or punch um, heart shapes out of just about any sized scrap so you know there's a few kind of go-to things you can do to just add some embellishments and stuff like that from any size scraps that you have and just bring little pops of color in where wherever you need to um but yeah, the leaves definitely worked. So that's one of those burlap pieces here. I'm going to cut this out and you're going to see I'm just cutting the roughest kind of most simple leaf shape out of this this paper. Um, I don't know if that's technically a scrap. That was that was cheating just a little bit. There were like only three tiny little pieces <laughs> cut out of that paper. But, um, you know, I guess any anything cut out of any paper no matter how small it is turns that piece of paper into a scrap so we're going to go ahead and go with it uh but yeah I just cut some leaf shapes out there uh which is just super simple you could fill up an entire layout of just having a bunch of leaves um and a couple of photos but following Katie's sketch 
it had um, animals in it. So she had like three embellishment clusters with a title and the clusters all had a larger animal. And so I realized that in those little bits of fussy cutting paper that I have left over I had a whole bunch of animals so I did cut out the fox and then I decided not to use that because I realized that one of the other animals was a bear and so um, you guys know that I have my fox and my bear and so I figured I would go ahead and keep those for a layout with um, some pictures from this same photo shoot that we did that I have of them and so I went ahead and did a little hedgehog and an owl and then I will eventually be grabbing a sticker that has a bird so I have three animals um, I don't have any mixed media in my background but I just felt like I had put a whole bunch of pattern up at the top and so it it was gonna be too much if I started to do some splatters of mixed media um, so that paper is going to kind of be uh, representative of, of the mixed media. And then I kind of smushed all of my pictures over to the one side like Katie has. I feel like her, her layout design definitely feels more left hand um, weighted than right handed. And so I kind of made all of my, my pictures more over to the, the left hand side so that it's Again, it's not really exactly what her sketch is, but it's just inspired by it. So now that I've kind of figured out some of these pieces, um, sometimes when you've got scraps, you might have to do what I just did there. I knew I didn't have any other kind of, you know, tabs or labels or anything like the ones I'm using. So I cut those in half so I'd be able to stretch them over the um, embellishment clusters and yeah that's just something you might have to do is kind of fussy cut things out just use little strips of things here and there um, to stretch those those limited supplies that you have uh, so I have some of those labels down below and now I'll put the opposite pieces that I cut up top so that I have um, two kind of similar bases for my embellishment clusters and then I've got these other two labels that I'm going to put where my little owl is going to go and I'll pop that up with some foam just adding a little bit of dimension and I was fussing for quite a while I cut a lot of that out because it was just too much it was too <laughs> there was too much fussing going on and so I had to give myself a little pep talk and say the one, the one kind of rule that I have when you're working with scraps is you don't necessarily have the luxury of picking everything um, for the first time from those papers, from that collection, uh, from you know the stickers and the extra ephemera embe and embellishments that you have. And so the fussing sometimes it's t it's too much because you you don't have anything uh, or you don't maybe have I, I I'm trying to avoid saying the best of the best but usually when you jump into a new collection you you pick the things that have caught your eye right there's always something about that collection that just catches your eye now with your scraps it's all the leftovers and so this is a good time to practice the you know stick and plonk method where you kind of just oh hi storm <laughs> you kind of just decide that something is going to go in a certain spot you add some adhesive and you plonk it down and you just commit and um you know you don't necessarily have to be as fussy because these are just the scraps. You are creating something beautiful out of something that might otherwise just get thrown out or get um, popped back into an iris container or back into some plastic packaging and kind of forgotten about. So um, it's always a good time for me to practice letting go of some of that fussiness and 
that um, desire to try to get everything perfect and exactly where I want it to go uh, and remind myself that this is like a bonus. This is like the cherry on top. I've created a bunch of layouts using all of these papers. I've kind of, you know, picked the best of the best pieces and now this is everything I have left over. This is the bonus of an extra layout that uh, I am I am getting with all of these little bits and pieces. So with that in mind, I try to take it easy. I did have to give myself a little bit of a timeout because I was getting kind of fussy, especially with that top, that top piece. It's a sticker from the sticker sheet and it says fall. And I was trying to force it into the same spot where Katie has her title on, on her sketch and it just wasn't working for me. And so I finally just took a breather, gave myself a bit of a timeout, came back and uh, decided I was just going to commit to where things kind of landed the first time I put them down. And then voila, I was able to kind of keep going and uh, get a bunch more stuff used up. So I've got these cute little clusters with some leaves and some little words. I've got some foam stickers in there and some pieces from the sticker sheet and a uh, bunch of different patterns from all of the scraps. I didn't completely use up any of those larger scraps, so I still definitely think I can get another layout or two, but I, I put a good dent in things. Um, and I did get some of those little uh, ephemera pieces or die cut pieces fussy cut and used up, so that was really nice too. And yeah, now I'm just going to finish it off with some gorgeous sequins and some splatters. And that is it. I feel like I have talked your ear off for quite a while. I think this is going to be like a 22 minute video. Um, that one's pretty long for me, but I hope that I gave you a few tips and uh, didn't just kind of ramble on. Um, so that is my layout for this month's crop. And please go and check out the links down below if you want to join in on the crops and see what else is going on in the group, as well as the playlist for Scrap Timber is down below too. Subscribe if you haven't already. I would really appreciate it. And thank you so, so much for watching. I love you guys, and I will see you all again soon. Until next time, happy scrapping. Bye.